Moving on to the next step as well. The next step that I just want to quickly discuss is data transformation. I'm sure you've all been through this, but data transformation, this is my second diagram, I'm going to say. This is the second diagram that you pull off the internet and has to, for all of my students, it has to be in your summary book, no matter what, non-negotiable. You don't draw this one out. This one comes from the internet. You print it out, you cut it out, you paste it in. There are no negotiations to this at all. Why is that? Because it's the best diagram there is out there for this. Now, if your data looks a little bit like this and you come to the realization it is non-linear and you're not happy with it, it goes in a pattern like that. And then a question asks, hey, you've got non-linear data, so why don't you make it linear? Why don't you make it as linear as you can? So then when you make things linear, you can sort of look at trends and so forth. It makes it easier to look at. Um, so for things like forecasting and so forth. So what you do is you go to this diagram and you say, all right, what's what curve of my circle does it match? It matches this one here. All right, I'm going to apply either one of these. I'm not going to apply all three. I'm going to apply either. Now, which one do I choose? Well, you do all of them. And the one that produces the, heart, the highest R value or the best R value, the one that's closest to positive one or negative one, is the one that you choose. And that's really important. The one that is closest to negative one or positive one is the one that you choose. How do I do that? Essentially, it looks a little bit like this. You apply your transformation. So you go, all right, I've got Y, I've got X. I apply my X squared transformation. I've applied my X squared transformation. This is my new set of data. I put that in my, <coughs> I put that in my calculator. And what I do with that from my calculator is I um, linear regress it and I get an R value. I then do the same. I take this data here and I go, all right. So I did X squared, which was this one here. So, or it was this one. Let's just say it was in this one for the sake of it. I then go and apply Y squared. So I would then go, all right, Y squared equals, and I do uh, one, whatever four and a half is, 10 is a hundred, whatever 16. I don't have, I don't have the numbers for that. So I'm not gonna go and do that. Um, and then what I would do is I would get rid of essentially this one, get rid of this one, and I would compare these two now. And I would look at my R value. And I compare the two R values from this one and from this one here. And I say, which one is the better R value? It's probably gonna be this one. And I go with that as my set of data. And I don't use the Y squared transformation, I use the X squared. Um, and then as you can see here, that's what happens. Looks pretty cool. Um, really important if you are to draw one of these out, you need to put the X squared or whatever transformation you did on the correct axis. So if I did Y squared, I would have done Y squared. Or if I did, you know, if I did one over Y, I say one over Y, etc. Awesome.